I'm Matt Hill. I'm a curriculum designer here at MRU. And this is day five of our Inflation Your Plan. And I'm walking through the slides with y'all. Um, just giving you an idea of what we were thinking on each of these slides. So the first two days we covered the history of money, functions of money, the characteristics of money, how we got to our current uh, monetary system and the dangers of that system, which is inflation, which we talked about in uh, day three. And then in day four, we talked about how do we measure uh, inflation. In day five, we're going to think through, okay, we have this tool, the CPI, um, that measures inflation. And we're going to think through, okay, what are the biases in that CPI? You know, how might it not, not exactly be accurate? Or, you know, what are the difficulties in comparing prices um, across time? All right. And so to motivate this, the bell ringer is asking students to think about have iPhones. Yeah, everyone likes iPhones, I guess. You know, I assume the students are all, in, all uh, into the latest technology. Have iPhones gone up or down in price? Have they increased or decreased in price since 2007 when they first came out? And I think, you know, here, obviously, have a discussion, talk back and forth. Now, I think the the instinct of most people will say that iPhones have gone up in price. Now, hopefully by now, students should know that they should at least adjust for inflation when um, comparing prices over time. So let the discussion go. Hopefully lead them at least to that, um, to that, to that conclusion that, okay, we should adjust for inflation. And here we have the prices. So in the red dot is the actual price of the iPhone over time. And in the blue dot, this is just the basic iPhone. And in the blue dot, we have adjusted for uh, inflation to 2022 um, dollars. And so, uh, yeah, in general, they've gone up in price since they came out in 2007. But actually, if you look at the 2008 one and the 2022 one, not much difference in price once we adjust for inflation. And I, I've, I put the trend line in here, the blue trend line to show, OK, yeah, in general, they've gone up. But if you take out this data point here and this data point here, so the high and low data points, a much flatter trend line. So I think the instinct is to think, oh, well, these things have really gone up in price over time. But when you, you know, you look at it like this, after you adjust for inflation, sort of take out those outliers, you know, it really hasn't changed um, much. All right. So that's just what we've done thus far. That's just adjusting for inflation. Um, but then you got to ask your students, but okay, but we have another difficulty here in that the iPhone today is different from the iPhone uh, in 2007. I mean, you can ask your students, like, how many of you would like an iPhone from 2007? I mean, how? okay, you know, imagine you could pay $800 after we adjust for inflation for an iPhone from 2007 to actually use. I doubt anybody would actually want that iPhone because, of course, the quality has increased. The capabilities have increased over the time. So, you, you know, even though... This 2020, actually the 2022 one is actually not that much more, um, or maybe the same as the 2008 one. You know, you know, even though whatever costs the same, or even if it's gone up by a little bit, it's you know the actual phone itself is um, you know a vastly different phone than it was, um, you know, whatever uh, whatever 15 years ago. You know, here's just one comparison. This is the camera comparison as we go from the iPhone one to the iPhone 6, and you can see the difference um, in quality there. And so these are some of the biases that creep into our CPI. Remember, the CPI is a basket of goods, and the basket is held constant over time. So we're sort of looking at the same goods over time to compute this um, CPI. But we have you know, two potential issues here. One is new goods are invented. So you know, the iPhone comes out. The other issue is many goods increase in quality um, because of new technology. You know, you have here you have a portable, you know, here you have a portable uh, stereo, you know, a portable stereo today. These are a little like whatever, these little Alexa type things that you can get or speakers, you know, are of much better quality, at least, or even if you don't think they're better quality, they have much more capabilities in terms of Bluetooth and, and that sort of thing. Now, the, the BEA, the people in charge of the CPA, they do try to account for these um, biases um, in a couple different ways, but you know, obviously, these are adjustments that can never be perfect because these are, you know, either fundamentally new goods that come out, 
or you know real changes in quality and capabilities of our existing uh existing goods and so to get the students thinking about this the big activity all of this lecture is to ask them all right so you're buying an iphone before one comes out before 2007 how much would an iphone be valued like how much would you have to pay for an iphone i mean we looked at the price of an iphone since 2007 but I mean, you know, the BLS does inflation year to year to year, you know, going all the way back you know, to the 1800s. So sorry, the BEA, not the BLS. Um, can you, you know, move that back? You know, how much would an iPhone cost in the 1990s? And you may be thinking, like, well, how are we, you know, how are they going to do this? And the students may think, well, how, how are we going to do this? Luckily, we have this for you, a Radio Shack ad from 1991 has all the things that would go into an iPhone. All of all the capabilities of an iPhone are here. You got a computer. You got a phone. You got a tape recorder. So you know, record your vi your voice. You got a basically an answering machine, which is like voicemail. So you have you have speakers. You have a video camera. So you have all these things that would go into an iPhone. So if you're thinking about, okay, how would I make an iPhone in 1991? You got to get all these things together. Now, of course, it wouldn't fit in your pocket, but you you know, if you bought all the things that does what an iPhone does, how much would it cost you in 1991? So this is what your students are going to do in their student activity sheet, come up with a number, and it is a high number. And the point of this exercise is just to kind of show the difficulty of comparing things over time because of new goods, because of the change in quality. And let's look towards the future. Again, this is to spark discussion. Let's think of some possible inventions that you know may happen or hopefully happen um, in my lifetime. Driverless car, cure for cancer, a vacation on the moon. How would we value this? Like, How much would we pay for these things in the present? And again, here the idea is to spark discussion, spark interesting discussions. And sort of the point of it is how difficult it would be and how we would all have different measures of it. And this is the problem with trying to adjust prices over time because... You know, how do we value things that don't exist yet? You know, when we go back in time, things that will exist, but didn't exist then. And so we just have some, you know, different ideas of how you might value this, you know, what, a, what a, how much we'd have to pay for a chauffeur, um, you know, how much, you know, in terms of uh, the cure for cancer, how much that would be valued, at least from the government position, you know, the government has to come up with a value of human life for various cost benefit analysis. Um and so, you know, how do we value that? How will we value a vacation to the moon? This is how much the Apollo mission, the initial moon landing cost. So, and again, the idea here is just to point out how difficult um, it is. All right. So we have a couple of fun activities and to introduce these biases. And then just to sum it up on this last slide, we think about the dollar from 1950 compared to the dollar in the present. So that dollar in the present makes... The dollar in the present is worth less than the dollar in 1950 because you can buy less stuff because prices have gone up. However, there's this other, because of innovation, there's this other thing going on because of it, both innovation to existing goods. The type of goods I can buy are usually of higher quality. This is, you know, with technological goods, this is usually the case. And there's a bunch of goods that I can buy today that you couldn't even buy in 1950. So that makes the dollar today more valuable because it can buy these goods that someone in 1950 could only dream of. So for these reasons, the CPI often overstates inflation, makes inflation seem higher than it actually is because it's hard to capture the fact that the dollars are more valuable because you could buy all this new stuff. Just a note on quality. This can be a little controversial. I think there is... Uh, you know, we're sort of assuming that quality increases for goods, which can be controversial in that I think a lot of people maybe think that uh, goods go down on quality. So, I mean, depends on the goods. I would say in general, electronics, cars, TVs, that sort of stuff generally increase in quality, at least the capabilities. Um, and even most other goods, I would say if you compared a similarly priced good across time, it would be of higher quality. Again, that's a little controversial. Um, so, you know, approach it however you'd like. Uh, the one thing I note and we note here in the slides is, you know, a lot of times people have this perception of the past that the goods were of higher quality because the goods we have from the past are the goods that survived. So this is a classic example of survivorship bias. Only the goods of the highest quality last into the present. You know, I remember uh, in high school, I found one of my uh, uncle's old flannels, uh, in my closet because I was living with my grandparents at the time. 
And so you think, oh, well, look how look at the high quality of this flannel that lasted from the 1970s, and it was a very high quality flannel. In fact, it had some, it still had some uh, some photos, some Polaroid photos of of my uncle uh, with with a with a woman that was not his wife. No, nothing seedy, just you know, just him on a date. Um, and so uh, I gave those, I gave that, I gave that potential blackmail uh, material to him for Christmas. But anyways, my point is. You know, all, all of his other clothes from the 1970s, I'm sure disintegrated, was long gone, had a bunch of holes in it. You know, so only the highest quality flannel, only this really, really nice, um, you know, flannel that he had is the only thing that survived um, to the present. And so we have this perception of, oh, the goods in the past are so much better because only the best ones survive. That's not to say, you know, all goods go up in quality. Um, you know, I'm sure there are some examples of goods that have gone down in quality. But, you know, in general, you know, you could think of, again, if you don't, if you don't buy the quality story, capability story of, of our electronics, our technology, we can do a lot more in the present than they could in the pre in the past. And this is, uh, as we, as we, as the whole point of this lecture, a source of bias. Okay. So, and again, we're just with this exit ticket, we are sort of reinforcing what we, what we've learned, um, making sure, you know, that this idea that you know, something before it's invented would be much more expensive, um, making sure the students kind of understand um, these potential biases. All right. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.